Welcome to Talking Fossils. Today I'm joined by award-winning crime author Rachel McLean. Rachel McLean has many fantastic novels to her name, uh, but today we're mainly talking to her about her Dorset crime series. Rachel's Dorset crime series is set in some of the most iconic locations in Dorset, and some of which incorporate the Jurassic Coast. So thank you very much for joining me today, Rachel. If we could start by just giving a little bit of background, tell us a bit about yourself and how you've come to be the author that you are and the, the crime series that you're writing at the moment. Yeah, so my name's Rachel McLean and I write crime fiction, police procedurals. And one of my series is the Dorset crime series, which is set in and around Dorset, predominantly the Isle of Purbeck. Um, I'm actually a Brummie. I'm not from Dorset, but all my childhood holidays were in Dorset. My parents had a caravan in Wareham. So I learned to ride a bike around the back streets of Wareham. I learned to swim on Bournemouth Beach. Um, oh, I have so many happy memories of the Isle of Purbeck. So writing about Dorset gives me an excuse to, to come back and visit and revisit some of the lovely places that I spent time when I was younger. Uh, that's brilliant. Um, have you, so have you been writing for a long time? I've been writing for many, many years, but I started writing fiction uh, 18 years ago when I was pregnant with my oldest son. Um, it actually took me 15 years to get the first book done and dusted and ready for publication. The first book always takes a long time because I think that teaches you how to write, writing your first book. I'm a lot faster now. And I started writing crime in uh, early 2020. I, I'd been writing uh, sort of post-apocalyptic and dystopian thrillers up to then, which really interested me, but there weren't a lot of readers for them. And um, those, those readers that did find them enjoyed them, but um, it, it was quite difficult to find an audience for them. And it turned out to be a very good decision because dystopian and post-apocalyptic fiction absolutely tanked during the pandemic. Nobody wanted to read about a dystopia when they were already living in one. So I, I started writing crime because I've always enjoyed writing suspense and sort of dark kind of fiction. Um, and my first series was set in Birmingham uh, which did really well and then I moved to writing in Dorset and those those books have have done incredibly well they've been really really well received by readers both local readers who live in the areas around where the books are set and people who've been to Dorset on holiday and love the county and enjoy reading about it. You've answered the question of why Dorset I mean do you want to elaborate on that at all? I think what I find quite interesting is I tend to start each book with a location. For my Birmingham books, I started with a crime or a criminal um, or a victim. But with Dorset, I always start with where would be a great place to stash a body? Um, and I often find these locations when I'm out walking. So I'll come down and I'll, I'll go for long walks and, and find places that are particularly sort of secluded or very beautiful. So there's that sort of juxtaposition of a horrible thing happening there in a really beautiful area. So for example, one of my crime scenes in the Corfe Castle murders is above Corfe Castle, where you, you climb, when you're, you're taking the walk um, along the Purbeck Way towards Swanage and you suddenly come up to the top and you've got the amazing view of Paul Harbour in front of you. So I've got a scene where, it's this beautiful view, but I've got CSIs trying to get a forensic tent up and they're not really focused on the view. So I start with locations and I find the more I the more I visit Dorset, the more locations I come up with. I think I could carry on writing crime books set in amazing locations around Dorset for the rest of my life and never run out of ideas. So, I mean, you've touched on it there. You, kind of, you go for walks and you see the places, but what is it specifically that draws you to that? place or that topic and um, what is it that inspires you specifically about that place and you think oh I have to write about that? Um, often it's somewhere that I've been to many times and loved so for example I haven't written it yet but I am going to write one at Blue Pool because I love Blue Pool it's such a it's such a almost eerie when you walk around there's something about the fact that you've you've got such an unusual it's it's um it's all you know coniferous trees and it's 
it deadens the sound because you're walking on the, the needles and it's it's almost spooky when you walk around there. So it's a great place for a crime scene. Um, sometimes places are absolutely crying out to be used as crime scenes. So, for example, again, I haven't written this one yet, but it's definitely on the cards. Tynum um, would be the ideal place to set this sort of thing because you've got an abandoned village, you've got derelict buildings, but in the middle of it, the church is intact and has been preserved and looked after. So it, it makes for an interesting story around who the people are who are still preserving what they are and looking after the village. But at the same time, it's largely been taken over by plants and wildlife. And there are plenty of places in Tynan where you could hide a body. So that will definitely be a location. I think that's going to be book nine. So I'm currently writing book six, which is in Lyme Regis. Um, and that's called the Fossil Beach Murders, and that starts with a landslip, as often happens along that stretch of coast, which uncovers a couple of bodies that have actually been there a very long time. I was so intrigued to read that. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely writing it. I went down to Lyme Regis at the beginning of December for a long weekend and did lots of walking and researching and taking photographs and identifying the spots where not only where the crime scene would be but but where people in the book would live and so forth oh and it was it's I love Lyme Regis I've got to write more books there so I can keep going back yeah that was my next next question actually is whether you visit the places you write about but I I mean you obviously do <laughs> do you spend a long time there when you're do you write the book there or do you just visit once a few times? I don't tend to write the book there because obviously it takes a lot longer to write a book so it'll take me a couple of months to write a book but I'll often be working on the book while I'm there so I might um, visit a place and be staying in the area and be going back to my hotel or cottage or whatever and, and writing while I'm there. I make lots of notes, I take lots of photographs which I then share with my readers via my newsletter and my Facebook page and I always record a video at the crime scene and then on release day for each book I put that video on my Facebook page and share with my readers where they're about to read about. It can be challenging. I did one, um, I was at Portland Bill in December and I've there's going to be one called the Lighthouse Murders there and I recorded a video when the wind was blowing a gale and I was shouting into the microphone and trying to be heard so it's not the clearest of videos but <laughs> it gives a good idea of what it's like at Portland Bill. Yeah as I say it's probably a more accurate video <laughs> than if it yeah. was there a nice calm sunny day. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and there tends to be quite a lot of detail about the places. So sometimes the geology or, like you say, of course, Castle and things like that. How do you uh, go about researching that type of detail? Say you go and visit. Do you talk to people? Do you read around it? How do you go about it? Um, it's partly visiting the places. So, for example, in the Corf Castle murders, the opening scene is at the Rings. Um, so I thought I'd have a historic site that wasn't Corf Castle itself. Uh, and introduce people to that. So I went to the rings and there are there are plaques there and information about it. And then I did a lot of Googling and research and I bought books. So I have a, a whole collection of National Trust books about various sites. There's one book, The Island Murders, which is on Brown Sea Island. And I have literature by them on Brown Sea Island. And I spent a wonderful day on Brown Sea Island last May when they not long opened the island up again, but they were restricting the number of people allowed on each day. So it felt as if I had the island to myself. And that that was great because the people in the book live on the island. They're, they work for um, National Trust and John Lewis. Um, and so I wanted to get that feel of what it would be like to be there when the tourists have gone home for the night. So uh, if I can ask you a, a slightly off piece question, um, do you have a favourite part? I can kind of guess the answer, but do you have a favourite part of the Jurassic Coast? The Jurassic Coast covers um, from Orkham Point in Devon to, to Old Harry Rocks in, in Swanwick, or like near Sutherland. Um, is it Dorset? Do you like Dorset? Have you been to the other side? Definitely Dorset. I don't know Devon as well. Um, I'm writing a little bit about Devon in, in the Fossil Beach Murders because Lyme Regis being so close to the boundary with Devon 
um, I'm having to introduce members of Devon Police Force into it. So there's going to be a little bit of toing and froing and interforce politics and that kind of thing. Um, but for example, the pathologist they bring in is going to come from Devon because it's closer, the local local morgue and so forth. But I, I have to admit, I don't know Devon as well. I know the Dorset coast really well, particularly East Dorset. So the Isle of Purbeck is what's most familiar to me because that's where I spent all my holidays as a child. So I would say the, the stretch of coast between Old Harry Rocks and Swanage is one that I know so well. I, I walked up there, we used to stay at the Pines Hotel in Swanage, which is still there. And this was when I was a toddler um, before my parents got the caravan. And we would walk up to Ballard Down and, you know, I'd, I'd be sort of practically carried up, I think, because it's, it's a pretty steep hill for a toddler. Um, but I, I think that's where I first went walking. Um, and I just, I love that bit of coast. And I love just sitting, watching the weather change over towards Bournemouth and seeing, seeing the clouds moving across Pool Harbour. There was one time I went up there and it was raining, but it was sunny in Bournemouth and you could see it and you could see the break in the clouds approaching. And I thought there's going to be a rainbow here soon. So I actually sat and made myself a little dry spot and I sat and waited for an hour. And then I got a photograph of a rainbow over old, old Harry Rocks, which was well worth the wait. So I think that stretch of coast is my favourite. Is there anything else that you think that either your readers or... Um... Jurassic Coast enthusiasts would uh, like to know or anything you would like to tell them? Um, I think I think that part of the reason why the Jurassic Coast and the countryside is so important in my books is because I like the location to be almost like another character. So Dorset is absolutely integral to those books. They couldn't you couldn't just move them and put them somewhere else. And I think my own personal connection to the area and the fact that I've spent so much time there and that I love it so much helps me to write that. And the feedback that I get from readers indicates that they really enjoy that as well. So it's something that I think a lot of crime writers do. For example, you take um, Anne Cleves with the Shetland series, you get a real sense of Shetland from those. And I was trying to create something similar with Dorset with my books and I hope I've succeeded. Personally I think you have. So. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah I mean I think the only other thing I was going to ask is if you could tell us anything about your future books but you have already so. <laughs> um. Yeah well there are I've got um, I'm currently writing on book six um, the Fossil Beach Murders and then I've I've got plans and locations for three more, but they will continue past that probably. I'm also working on a new series set in Scotland, which is going to feature one of the characters who's in the Dorset crime series, um, Petra McBride. She's a profiler and she appears in, I think, books four and five of the Dorset crime series. Um, and that will, that series will also feature um, DS Moerdin, who was in the Zoe Finch series. Um, I, I like to have my characters move around between series so that readers can follow them from one place to another. So I mean, Leslie, for example, Leslie Clark, who's the protagonist in the Dorset crime series, she was the boss of Zoe Finch, who was the protagonist in my Birmingham series. So yeah, lots of plans and traveling to beautiful places. And I think I will carry on writing about Dorset for as long as the ideas come, which is probably gonna be a very long time, yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for, for talking to us and for answering those questions and for writing about the coast. <laughs> thank you.